Austenites. They recreate the works of literary genius Jane Austen with the closest possible attention to detail. They are scouring England in search of the perfect location. You went here. Oh, look. Why are you speaking with an English accent? It is not always possible for the ladies to get permission to explore such regal houses. Where's she gone? You look that way, and I'm checking you. Okay. Claire is a cataloguer at Wapping Picture Library. It is here she researches the period of Jane Austen. Claire's knowledge of the character of Elizabeth Bennet is respected throughout the country in certain circles. Rebecca is a homeopath and works from home with her three dogs. She's not. Oh, this is brilliant. So we'll have to go. Yeah, I can really see her here. For the women, it is of utmost importance that the location matches the details of Austen's novel and the BBC adaptation. We do spend a lot of time researching you know, the, the perfect room um, online, on the National Trust site, or sometimes we just go on Street View. Massive stumbling block. It's an enormous television. It's with hated televisions. We're always referring to the, the BBC making of Pride and Prejudice book. <laughs> we don't mention the film. This isn't, isn't going to work. It's frustrating because we could have used the BBC's Pemberley Lime Park, but since the incident, I'm, I'm not that back. At last, the women find a room that could work. But all is not well with the Austin duo, and soon they are having a heated debate. Um, tell me what the problem is. Why are you wearing a dress? Because I'm playing Elizabeth. What I... You're not playing Elizabeth. I'm playing Elizabeth. But Claire, we rehearsed that I was going to be Elizabeth. You were going to be Darcy. I can't be Darcy. I've got bouncing curls. Bouncing, bouncing curls. You cut off all your hair. Oh, come on, Claire. Think outside the box a bit. I can wear a bonnet. Shh. Have a bonnet. Get changed. Get in my way. I can't believe she's doing this. She's Northern Irish. She's not even English. She can't play Elizabeth. And we don't know what kind of hair Elizabeth would have had. It's all just hearsay. We don't know, in fact, what kind of hair she would have had. We can't just go by everything the book says. Oh. With Claire now dressed as Elizabeth, 
The reenactment can continue and Rebecca joins her in the library. You look good. Oh, thanks. I like the cravat. Where'd you get it? Oh, it's a curtain tie. I found it upstairs. <laughs> Go on then, do it. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. Do it properly. <gasps> like we practiced. You practiced. In vain I have struggled. It will not do. My feelings will not be repressed. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. That moment when Darcy proposes to Elizabeth, it, it's just... It's, it's just an incredibly special moment. <laughs> I beg you, most fervently, to relieve my suffering and consent to be my wife. Soon the ladies explore other scenes in the Austen classic, the proposal Claire. being just one they Claire. wish to keep alive. Claire. I don't feel very comfortable doing this. What? I don't really understand why we have to have this scene. Of course we have to have this scene. We don't have a pond, do we? We have to see Darcy wet. So we have to see him get a bath. Let's just get on with it then, shall we? Ready? The women recreate the famous bath scene. What the fuck are you doing in my bathroom? But are soon interrupted by the shocked owner of the manor. It's just... It's just not fair. You know, the only thing we're trying to do is, is keep Jane Austen's stories alive, and the only way we can do that is by reliving them. For the two ladies, the search must continue for the perfect Austen sight. Their dream of keeping Darcy and Elizabeth's story alive lives on. With fond memories and a police caution, they say goodbye to Bath. Mm -hmm.